What is the actus reus of an attempt to commit a crime? The answer will vary depending on what the elements of the target offense are. There is, however, a general question about the actus reus of an attempt to commit a crime, no matter what the target offense happens to be. It is the question of how to draw the line between attempt and mere preparation. Rizzo is the classic case in which the court held as a matter of law that the line separating attempt from mere preparation had not been crossed. Let us take attempted murder as our example. Let's say the accused forms the intention of killing his victim and assume that this intention can be proven by the evidence of entries in a diary kept by the accused. With this intention, the accused buys a handgun to use to kill the victim. In buying the gun, has he already committed the crime of attempted murder? Surely this is mere preparation. But when would we say the accused steps over the line? Once he crosses the line, he is criminally liable. When he draws the gun in the presence of his intended victim? When he aims it? Surely he has performed the actus reus of attempted murder when he fires the gun at the intended victim. Should the law stay its hand until the gun is fired, despite the evidence of intention? The problem can be visualized by drawing this timeline running from earlier on the left to later on the right. Where should the law draw the line between mere preparation and attempt? Until the gun fires, the accused remains free to change his mind. He still has locus poenitentiae, or time to think it over, to repent of his intention to kill. But once the trigger is pulled, the so-called last act needed to execute the plan, the mechanism of the gun fires the bullet automatically, and the bullet cannot be recalled. If the bullet fatally strikes the victim, it is homicide, and no attempt crime can be charged. If it misses, an attempted homicide has occurred. Or had it occurred already, at some earlier point, before the trigger was pulled? To say that the line between mere preparation and attempt is not crossed until the accused has performed the last act seems to offer the public less protection from violence than the public can reasonably demand. Remember that we stipulated that we have the accused's diary leaving little doubt about its intentions. On the other hand, the accused is not an automaton. He is a free being who in the time remaining can still rethink, given the chance. So the law of attempts has rejected the last act test, and the law has always refused to punish anyone for thoughts alone. So where, between the two extremes, does the law draw the line? In Rizzo, the court held that the line is crossed once the actor gets dangerously close to success. Rizzo and company had not located the courier they were looking to rob, so they were not yet in dangerous proximity to success. The opinion intimates that had the evidence shown that the courier had been spotted, the conviction could have been affirmed. Dangerous proximity involves more than thoughts alone. On the other hand, it does not require that the defendant have performed the last act that suffices for the defendant 
to do all that she need to do to accomplish her criminal objective. The actor has time and an incentive to change his mind, but only so long as he stays outside the zone of danger. A neat solution, no? The phrase dangerous proximity to success rolls right off the tongue, too, doesn't it?